Hi, I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and I am thrilled to be here today at Missouri Star Quilt Company to teach you how to make this bovine from the Pudgy Plushies collection from the Rustic Horseshoe. These are some of my favorite stuffed animal patterns, and I'm really excited to share all of the insights that I have about them. So we'll be making the bovine today, which is part of the Pudgy Plushies collection, but I wanted to share with you some of the things about it that make it part of that. So there's a a sort of a theme throughout these patterns that are the same, and you can see some of them behind me. They have this typical sort of pyramid body shape, the legs come out at the bottoms, the, si the arms come out of the sides, and then they have very different facial features and that sort of thing to distinguish them between each other. And she has a wide variety that are available here. All right, so let's take a look at the pattern. I'll show you some of the things that I really particularly love about this one. This one is the Blissful Bovine. The one that you see on the cover here is just like the one that I made, but there are a variety of other choices that you can make to make it essentially yours. All of these will be included in pictures. You can see the variations and all of these different features are available to make in the pattern. She'll show you how to do all of those. So the pattern includes an introduction to it. It'll include lots of pictures to show you different ways that you can make it, all the supplies that you would need, which we're gonna talk about. And then color pictures throughout the entire pattern, which is just fabulous. And I love that she gives you lots of choices that you can make to make the animals specifically for you, including one of my favorite, which is the eyelashes, putting in the eyes, all sorts of stuff. And then she also includes at the back, she'll include more inspirational photos for you to see, to see if you wanna make yours similar to that, as well as a list of actually the products that she used to make the ones in her samples. So I think this is a great way to be able to recreate exactly what she's done or to set you off on your own creative adventure of making stuffed animals. So the pattern also includes full-size template pieces that you'll be able to use to make the pattern. When I do this, I actually cover mine with a laminating sheet to keep them more durable for all the tracing that I'll do. And all these are 100% and available for you to use. Just cut them out and we'll trace them as we go. So for the Blissful Bovine today, I chose the same fabrics that the Rustic Horse she used in their pattern to just recreate it basically exactly like she did. But you can use your own choice of Lux Cuddle and Cuddle fabrics. For the body, it's the Lux Cuddle calf, but you could use all sorts of Lux Cuddles. And if you're curious what a Lux Cuddle is, it's just the longer napped cuddle. So a Lux Cuddle is 10 millimeter nap or more. So some of them are very, very long, a couple of inches long. And then we also have the C3 or the Cuddle 3, which is what I used for all the hooves, the horns, and the muzzle, and also the inside of the ears. And Cuddle 3, or sometimes I'll call it C3, is just the cuddle that's actually a three millimeter nap. So sometimes people refer to it as the regular minky or a flat cuddle. That's all that is. So those two vary um, between, and you can have the flat one or you can have the fluffier one, depending on which look you're going for. And I love playing with them together to create a really fun textural experience. So beyond the fabric, here are some other tools that you're gonna need to make this project. I've got 24 millimeter safety eyes that I'll be using, as well as polyester thread, some stretch needles. We wanna always make sure that we're using 9014 stretch needles when working with cuddle fabrics because it's a knit. will help you not skip stitches, which is really important. I also have a marking pen for tracing out my patterns, a by Annie Stiletto, which will help me a lot when I'm trying to work with those small pieces. I use, also use a craft knife. This is the one from Ulfa that will help me cut out fabrics to make less of a mess. I've got my point turner and a water soluble marker. I also have my Karen K. Buckley scissors, which are micro serrated, which are my favorite and we'll need those for cutting out the cuddle as well. And then long flower head pins. So to start with this plushie, we're actually gonna start with the ears. And I've already made one, but we're gonna cut out and sew together another one. I'm gonna show you how we do it. With this one, we need one side that's the Lux Cuddle and one side is the Charcoal Cuddle 3. So we're gonna use those and we need to cut out opposites of either one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trace around them first and then we'll cut them out. Okay, so I'm just trace all the way around it. This says nap direction on it, and this is important to make sure that you are taking care of that when you are using something that is very clearly napped. This fabric isn't quite as obvious because it has a lot of embossing and texture. So this one doesn't matter quite as much. We do wanna make sure that it's going the width-wise of the fabric, which is the stretch. 
is widthwise on it when I'm tracing that out. So I've gone ahead and traced it. I'm going to mark my fold line very lightly. This is the top edge, nap, bottom, and then I have a little F right here that I'm also going to mark on my pattern. I'm going to do that very lightly with the Sharpie. It won't show through to the other side. And we'll go ahead and mark the opposite, the reverse, over on the Cuddle 3. So I'm just going to flip my pattern over, trace it out. This one I want to make sure, because Cuddle 3, you'll be able to tell the nap if it's wrong. So if I kind of pet it down and I pet it back up, you'll be able to see a difference in what the nap does. This is the nap heading down. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern on there and then trace right around that. Go ahead and mark my corner again. And then I believe my little F was down here in this corner. So I'm going to mark that. Sometimes on these pieces, I'll go ahead and mark what it is so I can remember when I've cut everything out. And if there's white on the fabric, I try real hard to put the writing in an area that has a little color. Even though it won't show through, I just want to make sure. All right, so now we've got these both traced out. I keep my pattern here and I'm going to cut these out. Because they are different lengths of nap, this one is three millimeter, this one is 10, I'm going to cut them out a little differently. So with my micro serrated scissors, this is what I'm going to cut the Lux Cuddle with. And the reason I do this is because I can cut just the backing fabric as I come around. So I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to stick the tip of my scissors underneath the backing and snip my way around the whole thing, being careful not to cut too much of the nap. So if you've worked with cuddles before, sometimes people get worried because it makes a mess. But if you cut it carefully, you will have less mess. Still have a little bit of mess because it's soft and fluffy. So work my way around with it. I'm also going to show you how I can do this with the blade, which is also like a craft knife. And I can go ahead and I just hold a little pressure and I'm going to run it along the back along those lines. I just carefully drag it and it will cut the backing only, which allows me to make less of a mess as I work my way around. So I'll finish that up, come all the way to the other side, just making sure I keep some pressure on it as I pull it. So for me, I think the blade is a little bit easier for me, but I also have a lot of practice. If you're new to it, use the micro serrated blades on the Karen K. Buckley scissors, and you will have just as easy of a time. All right, so go ahead and make sure all of those little bits are trimmed, and go ahead and move that. Okay. So now with the Cuddle 3 ear, I'm going to go ahead and cut it with my rotary cutter. It doesn't make nearly as much mess. I've traced the line. I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the way around it. I could also cut these with my scissors, but for me, the rotary cutter is a little faster. So I prefer that. Okay, and you'll see that it makes much less mess. All right, so now we've got it to this point. We don't want to take it and just go sew with it yet. We need to get rid of the mess. So I'll show you my favorite technique for getting rid of Cuddle 3 mess is I'm just going to take it over here and I'm going to flick it. Because <laughs> we want to get rid of this mess before we get it over to our sewing machine. We want to keep that stuff out of the sewing machine. So I'll always get rid of the mess away from that. Same goes for this. You can also, if you're going to make a, an entire plushie, which obviously you're going to, you're going to take it to the, you're going to cut out all your pieces, then take it to the dryer, throw it in the dryer for about five minutes with a wet washcloth in there, let it tumble around. And at the end, all of that extra cuddle dust, we call it, ends up in your lint trap and not in your sewing machine. So that's a very helpful way of making this a totally doable project. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew these two together and I'm just going to start pinning. On the pattern it shows me here that I'm going to leave this edge open. So when I put these two together I'm going to make sure and not pin that section because that's what I want to leave open as I sew. So I'm going to go ahead and pin where I want it to start or stop and do the other end as well. That's the way I always pin cuddle is I pin the important parts that I want to keep together and then I go ahead and pin in between. So I'm just going to pin in larger 
chunks here, and then I will come back and pin it in between. And I'm just gonna kind of feel, you can see that the Lux Cuddle glues right over the edge because we didn't cut all that off. If you don't want all that fuzz, you can cut it with the scissors or with the rotary cutter and just cut it off, but I kind of like it being there because I can fluff it up from the outside later. So I just kind of do a little double check, make sure I'm getting both sides. And go ahead and pin all the way around. So on these parts that are the curves, I'm gonna go ahead and pin another part in here just to keep it exactly where I want to. Coming around the curves on a knit can always be a little, a little dicey there. So we're just gonna add another pin in to keep it in position. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna sew this on the sewing machine. So I've got my machine set up with polyester thread and my 9014 stretch needle. I also just have it on a straight stitch. I have it at a 2.5 stitch length, which is actually smaller than I usually work with with cuddle. Normally we make it a three or a three and a half stitch length, but when I'm working with a plushie, I wanna make sure that that stitch is a little bit tighter because it'll hold it better, especially when you give it to a child who is going to love it and give it an extra little test of your durability. So we try to get a little bit smaller stitch length. And I'm actually using a quarter inch seam allowance, which is also different from when I usually work with cuddle fabrics. And that's because the, the stuffed animal is made with the quarter inch. So I'm just following the pattern for that. It works out fine. We just do wanna make sure that we're catching all of those seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot down. I've got my needle ticked over so that I've got a quarter inch underneath the foot. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew, do a little back stitch. Catch that seam, I'm gonna to wanna to do that with all of the seams that I'm making. I'm just gonna stitch all the way around. Kinda of lift that foot, make sure that the fabric will slide under nicely. Okay, so stop and pivot as you need to. Around those corners, it can get a little bit tight and the, the pins will help keep it in place, but you'll definitely want to adjust a little bit. And sew all the way around and back stitch at the other end. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and turn this inside out, turn it right side out. Clip my threads. And then I'll just go ahead and turn this. Because we're working with Cuddle, which is a knit fabric, you don't actually have to clip any of those curves, which makes it one of my favorite aspects of making the stuffies with Cuddle. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and as I work through this, you're gonna see that in your seam allowances, it gets kind of caught in there. So I just use my stiletto and I come in here and I fluff it right out. And I'll do that as I'm working through the project so that by the end of it, it's all lovely. And I'm not really, not pulling out those threads, I'm just kind of scraping at them, which makes them pop out of the stitches there. Okay, okay so I'm gonna go back and where I have the little marks for my fold line, I'm gonna put a pin in right there. You can see the line is right here on my, on my pattern. I traced it. And I'm just folding along that same line on my actual fabric pieces. So stick a pin in, fold it right tight along that pin. Go ahead and stick a pin in here. Then I'll move this pin, rearrange it, go back, and I'm going to zigzag that edge of the basting stitch. All right, so we're going to go ahead and change this stitch over to a zigzag. I'm going to make it a nice big wide zigzag because I'm just using it as a basting stitch. So this is a three and a half by three and a half, go ahead and just stitch this down along that edge. And it's just gonna hold it in place until I stitch it to the actual head. All right, so now I've got my ear, I've got my other ear, and I'm gonna set those aside. So following along in the pattern, the next step we're gonna do is to make the horns. And I've chose to make the nub horn this time, which is just a small, little horn. We're actually going to sew this together and stuff it before we put it onto the face in the next step. So let's go ahead and make this. We're just going to put these together. They're cut opposites of each other. Put them right sides together. I'm going to go ahead and pin them the same way that I did before. I'm going to leave the bottom open. I'm going to go ahead and pin 
the start and stop of my seam. I'll pin the center and then I'll pin in between. And one of the things that I've found that works well for pinning with these is these three I pinned from this side. If I go ahead and pin from the other side, it tends to help it make it lay flatter as I sew it. Go ahead and pin there and there. That should be enough. I'm going to sew around this seam here. It tells me on the pattern that I'm going to leave the bottom open. So that's what I'm doing. Then I'll come back in and I'll use the marks that are on here to tell me where the placement is. So I haven't transferred those marks because sometimes they'll show through more on the Cuddle 3. We're going to go ahead and sew that now. So we're going to go ahead and stitch all the way around again with a quarter inch seam allowance. Do a little back stitch and work our way around. And again, as I use these, sew these little curves, I'm going to kind of use the pins as steering wheels and then take my time and kind of adjust as I need to go. It's really important to keep these curves nice and smooth, so take your time with them. And again, we're doing this at a quarter inch seam allowance with a 2.5 stitch length. So nice and smooth, easy to go around those corners for a nicer finish. Get to the end, back stitch. Clip. Okay, and again, because this is cuddle, we don't need to trim those curves. We're just gonna flip it inside out. Now I can go ahead and I can take my point turner and kind of run it along those seams to make it nice and smooth. So now we're going to stuff it. I've got some silky polyfill here today, which is my favorite kind of polyfill for using with the stuffed animals and mostly because it's just super duper soft and it doesn't ever clump. I'm always kind of surprised at how much you actually have to put in there, so I say a little bit and it's going to seem like a lot. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. Just Shove it right in there. It's super duper easy and I love how smooth this stuff is. Makes it really just a lovely finish for your stuffed animal. And we'll do that for both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to actually, so I'm gonna push the stuffing in extra far and then I'm gonna pin so that the stuffing stays back just a little bit so that I can sew that closed along this edge to keep the stuffing where I need it to be for right now. So we're gonna go ahead and zigzag this edge. I've got it set up at a nice big wide zigzag again. Go ahead and stick the needle down on the left side, put the foot down, and then I'll take my pin out as I start sewing so that I make sure I not hit that pin. And I'm just trying to base that edge shut like I did with the ear as well. Okay, so I keep wanting to call these ears and I just realized it's because it says ear down here and I keep messing that up, but we want to be clear, these are the horns and here are the ears. And the next step is to put these onto the face. So on the face, I've got the pieces cut out and I've got them labeled and marked just like it says here. We want to make sure and follow these instructions and she has very clear guidelines in the pattern that you can follow, but she does give you placement lines for where you want the pieces to go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the ear and the horn on. We're going to put them in the right order. So we're going to start with the horn and then place the ear. If we look at the patterns, we can see how they're going to come together. So the ear is going to go here, the horn is going to go here, and the ear is going to go below and behind it. So first I'm going to put the horn on, matching the E with the top of the horn. And I'm gonna come over here and pin that in place. And I'm actually going to baste it on on both sides before I place the ear. For me, when I'm trying to do too many layers, it can get difficult, so I just do one layer at a time, I'll baste, and then I'll baste the next one on. So this one I know the ear goes on the same way, same shape, put that in position I'm going to go ahead and pin it in place. And I'm going to pin that twice, making sure that the raw edges are basically matching. Okay, and I'll pin it twice just to hold it there really nicely for me. All right. 
then we're going to go ahead and baste these down with a zigzag. Again, just basting it in place. I find it a little bit easier to do the zigzag stitch as a baste because it will hold down a wider area and I might be able to catch a little bit more than I would if I just tried to straight stitch. So when it gets a little bit tight sometimes like this under here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my stiletto to kind of poke through the one layer and into the bottom layer to keep them together and just try to guide it toward the needle. Clip our threads and add the ears. So again, place these down just like I had the pattern so we can see where these go. So the ears go next and the bottom of the ear, place bottom of edge of ear here. So that's how I know where it's gonna go. All right, I'm gonna can, can put it on here. And I always like to do a double check. So I'm gonna pin this in place as if I had sewn it. I'm kind of going to put a pretend quarter inch seam in here, turn it and make sure, yes, that ear is facing the right direction now. All right, it's always important because you can put those on backwards because you can't see the inside of the ear, which sometimes can seem a little bit confusing. A lot of times we want to kind of put the ear on so we can see it, but that's wrong. So always make sure and do a little double check. Okay, so I'm going to repin this perfectly now, or at least as close to it as I can. And it's going to just barely overlap the bottom of that little horn. And that's what we want. So go ahead and pin that. I'll do the other one. Make it match the same way. I know it's going to work because we only have one ear for each. Okay, so again, I'm going to match the F mark here with the bottom of the ear. Pin it in position there first and then head up and pin the top of the ear in position. And again, we'll base that in position. Let's go ahead and sew these on. So again, I'm just doing that zigzag stitch. And the zigzag stitch, not only does it baste it, but it also helps kind of squish down that edge a little bit. So when we do the next seam, it's a little easier. going to do a double check, make sure that my plate pieces are all in the right place that I want them to be. Nothing shifted on me, which can sometimes happen. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that down, making sure to keep this as flat as possible. And I can kind of use those pins to help me guide it along. All right. Okay, now we can see it's starting to come together. We've got two sides of the face. So now the next part, we're gonna sew the top from A to B and C to D. So I'm just gonna put those together, try to keep those horns and ears out of my way. And I'm just gonna pin along the top and then we'll go back to sewing with the straight stitch. So again, pinning a corner and a corner, and then in between. When I'm doing these shorter seams too, I will often pin perpendicular to it. And if you've seen other tutorials where we do longer seams, a lot of times I pin parallel to these edges, but on these small, especially curved ones, I will pin this way. And it does tend to hold the fabric a little bit better. C to D, and then in between. All right, now let's sew those. So we're gonna switch this back to a straight stitch. And I've actually got it 
pushed over to the left hand side for the needle because it gives me a little bit extra room under there where I can see my quarter foot and where I can actually keep a lot of the bulk outside of the foot. In the seam I'm going to go ahead and back stitch because that one I need it to be nice and strong. We're no longer in a basting stitch. This one is going to hold it together. Stitch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check my seam on both sides. Just make sure that it caught. A lot of times it'll want to kind of shift on you a little bit. So if you can notice this seam is not exactly a quarter of an inch. It's much more accurate over here. It's totally fine. As long as both sides are caught, we're good. We'll make sure that it's nice and nice and snug seam right there. And then we're going to go ahead and sew the bottom seam. Do it the exact same way. Dirty little secret is that I don't really clip my threads ever, but it looks terrible on camera. <laughs> you have these threads everywhere. But when I make plushies for samples, the insides are just crazy. So don't open up the bovine, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> don't do it. All right, so now this is when it starts really starting to come together. My favorite part about making the plushies is you really can start to see it kind of come together and become a thing pretty quickly and it really is super fun. So now we've got his face together, we're gonna do his muzzle next. So the next part is we're gonna be making the muzzle and this is actually in two pieces. We've got, well, it's actually in four pieces, but there's two parts to it. There's the sides and then the actual part that comes around the front of the muzzle. So we're gonna create this first. And it's got three pieces. It has a top muzzle, the nose panel, and the bottom muzzle. These are all part of the gusset. When you're doing the bull ring for the nose, you're gonna do this part a little bit differently and that pattern is, those instructions are in the pattern. We're gonna do it without the nostrils. Again, we're gonna pin each end to make sure that those match and then pin in between. Because this is a nice straight seam, I'm not going to do the extra pinning. It should say just fine. It's a very short straight seam. Okay, straight stitch, quarter inch seam allowance. Go ahead and back stitch again. These are all going to be important seams that need to stay together. So we need to make sure and secure those with the back stitch. So we've got the top muzzle sewn to the nose panel. Okay, so top muzzle gusset sewn to the nose panel, and now we'll sew the bottom muzzle gusset to the bottom of the nose panel. For me, it's very helpful to kind of lay these out and really look at them and compare them to the pattern pieces, just so I can make sure I'm doing it right. With sewing the plushies, sometimes you'll be making pieces that don't actually make any sense visually until you start to put them together into more of a whole. So make sure to follow the actual pieces and the pattern carefully. So now we have the completed muzzle gusset, which is going to go on the side the, with the muzzle sides. All right. So on here we have some marks that tell us is where our nose seam is. The nose seam. That's what this is. So we're going to match this seam and this seam here. All right. So as we're putting it together, we're going to make sure to match those places as well as the ends, and then pin in between. There might be a little bit of easing that has to be done. 
You'll notice that on the Lux Cuddle, it's a little harder to see where those are on this side because the edges are so soft. If that is a little bit of a, a barrier to you, you can absolutely go ahead and trim off those edges. I just leave them fluffy so that I can keep the seams nice and fluffy. And also, I've gotten used to working with this, but if it does bother you, go ahead and trim that off. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pin this on. This, if we remember right on the pattern, this one is going to this seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that there. And then I'm gonna pin this to this corner up here, the top corner. And then I'll pin the next seam, which was that H mark goes to the other seam on the nose. And then the last one will curve around down here. On these pieces, it definitely seems like it's not going to work when you first start pinning it. You'll be surprised it'll work itself in just fine. So trust, trust the process, trust the pattern. They're well, well designed and they will definitely work out even when it seems like it might not. Besides the fact that Cuddle, especially the Lux Cuddle is really, really forgiving in this. So if you, your seams aren't perfect, they don't match up exactly, it's all gonna work out just fine. You're still gonna end up with a lovely, lovely little plush, plushie. So lots of pins. I'm gonna just kind of deal with a little visual double check, make sure that my raw edges are matching. And you end up with all of these pins and it can seem a little bit crazy. On seams like this, if there's too many pins and this starts to feel a little overwhelming, you can go ahead and hand baste this and then take it to your machine and sew it. And sometimes that's a little bit easier. And I find myself doing that for certain seams, but this is one that is to they're all totally doable on machine, all right? But we're actually gonna sew it from this direction. So that's one of the things when you're working with the plushy patterns is you wanna make sure that anything that has bulk is on the top and that the flatter part is against the foot or against the feed dogs of your machine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch quarter of an inch all the way around, all the way around. A little back stitch and just work my way around. I'm gonna try not to get any little pleats in there. Can kind of stop, readjust things, make sure that they go where you want it to. Just make sure that you have lots of pins and that you're not actually stretching the fabric as you go. As I work my way through, I can keep my stiletto handy and kind of feed it underneath the foot. Just a little bit, if you get the tiniest little pleat, you're fine. I wouldn't worry about it, but try not to get too much in there. So I'm gonna stop when I get to this seam and I kind of readjust, make sure, cause this was actually like a corner. So I wanna make sure that I'm going in the right direction. It's gonna turn just a little bit as I come up that nose. And I'll just take it nice and slow. And then just adjust as I go. If you have a pivot function on your machine, this is a great time to use it. You'll be able to kind of just work your way around. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and double check my seam, make sure I caught everything. If I didn't, I'm gonna go back which I see I missed a little bit right here, just came to the edge. I'm gonna take it back in, I'm gonna take a little bit bigger, take a little bit bigger seam allowance, make sure that I'm catching it. So I'm gonna sew it from this side where I missed it before so I can see it and make sure I catch it. Because we're working with the Lux Cuddle, it's kind of amazing how much you can hide in here. That we'll be able to stitch this over, take a little bigger seam allowance and no one will be any wiser. So now we've got one side of the muzzle sewn on. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side.
All right, so now we've got a cute little muzzle. All right, so the muzzle, <laughs> my little mom voice comes out. It's just so cute. Okay, so now the muzzle is gonna get sewn onto the face. The way that this is done is this is kept this direction. This is kind of, oops, folded over. Let's try that again. So this is gonna have to get sewn on to here. So the muzzle is gonna get sewn onto the face. We need to bring these right sides together. So we're gonna kinda fold the face over the muzzle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mark the, I'm gonna match the center mark for the top with the B here to mark the center of the top of the head and the B that's in the top of the muzzle. And these are gonna match together. So as you go through the pattern, make sure that you have transferred all of those numbers, the lines, all of that sort of markings that are on there as they will help you put that together accurately. Sometimes it's very hard to tell where things are supposed to go, except for those markings. So down here we have the same thing. We have a center line that's gonna go with the bottom chin. I'm gonna spread that seam allowance open as much as we can. Just get it nice and flat. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this circle. Again, this is another place that if this feels a little too small for you to sew, you can go ahead and hand baste it and then put it under the sewing machine and that makes it a lot easier. This tiny circle can be a little bit intimidating, but if you just take your time with it, you'll be okay. So I'm gonna go, sh go ahead and show you how I hand baste this when I need to. We're gonna do that just to give you an idea. So I just have a double threaded needle. So I've got uh, the double strand of polyester thread on just a needle and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take nice big basting stitches all the way around this at about a quarter of an inch. So I'm not gonna use this as my seam allowance and I'm not even measuring it. I'm just trying to get a basting stitch in here so that I can then take my pins out. So just nice big stitches all the way around. And as I get an area covered, I can go ahead and take these pins out because now the basting stitch is gonna hold it in position for me. And after I do this, I can check to make sure that I've caught both sides, make any adjustments as needed before I take it to the sewing machine. So while it's a little bit of an extra step, it can be very, very helpful on these small curves, on things like this where we have a, we have a full circle that we have to sew. Sometimes that can be a little bit a little bit extra. So this stitching makes it so we're not fighting pins and we're just able to smoothly sail all the way around. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch past where I started just a little bit, just so it'll catch. And go ahead and take the rest of those pins out. And kind of Double check it all the way around, make sure I can see those basting stitches. Now I can just kind of follow that, follow that path. I'm gonna actually make sure that I've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but I'll follow that whole path. And if I need to take out any of the stitches afterwards, so they don't show, I can do that. Okay, so again, quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick it under on the side of his face because it's a little bit easier place to start. There's a a longer straight stitch or straight seam that we're going to do and then we'll start working around that that curve and again I'm just going to take my time with this and just try to flatten things out as I go work my way around and just be very careful with it And if I start to see it get a little bit off, I can just kind of readjust, fix things. As I said, the Luxe Cuddle, Cuddle in general is very, very forgiving fabric. 
So if there are any little issues, they're generally going to be just hidden in all of that fluff. Just perfect. Okay, so take my time, kind of guide it with my stiletto here, make sure it's going where I want it to. And again, keep kind of flattening it as I go, make sure I'm catching where I need to. Work my way all the way around. So there's a spot down at the bottom where the seam allowances didn't match up perfectly and I just made sure it caught on it. And that's all that matters. If there's a little bit bigger seam allowance on one side than another, it will all come out in the wash or, you know, stay there after we've sewn it. All right, let me make sure it's all good and go ahead, kind of come around, give it a little pull, make sure everything is caught and that my finger behind it isn't going to pop out. So if I'm coming around here and I, I can feel my finger kind of come through the seam, that's when I know I have to go back around. Now I can't see anywhere in here where my basting stitch is showing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of fluff up those edges while I'm here. Make that all nice and smooth. Okay, you can kind of just pull it open and you can see where this, the fibers have been caught into the seam allowance and then just go ahead and fluff them out. Same for those side seams. We'll see if there's anything. Make sure it's all looking good. All right, there we go. Getting a little face. So now we're gonna sew the face onto the front body. So I'm just gonna take the front body piece, which has a section here that you can actually create an applique if you'd like to, which is common in many of the pudgy plushy patterns. There's an, actually an applique that you can make it more personalized so that it looks like your favorite cattle, cow or your favorite horse, depending on the pattern that you're using. Um, so this is a very common applique area. So I've gone ahead and I've traced this. It's done on the fold. And I will tell you when I cut it, I make sure to cut it so or trace it out. I make sure to trace it out so that I trace one side and then I flip it and trace the other side. I don't actually fold it. So it's really important that when you're tracing this, you do it one layer at a time and cut it one layer at a time. When you do it two layers at a time, it's much more likely to shift because of the layers of the, because of the depth of the nap. It'll kind of move and you won't get an accurate cut. So make sure you trace and cut this one layer at a time. Then I've gone ahead and marked it because the front and back body panels are exactly the same shape. So I've gone ahead and marked this as the front. And then I left the marks for where the leg front goes. The markings for the back are the leave open on back and the tail markings. So there are some variances between the front and the back panels. Make sure you mark those on there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this over. This is gonna get sewn onto here. Here's his neckline. And again, we're gonna mark. We're gonna pin it at the end and the end, and then pin in between. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just kinda stretch that, make sure, not really stretching it, just kinda keeping it taut, make sure that it's where I want it to be. Go ahead and put those pins in there. Try to keep that nice and straight because the, because the neckline is kind of a curve, because it's two pieces that come in a V and this is a straight one, you'll have to kind of adjust it just a little bit Play with it a little, make it sure it's nice and flat all the way across. Then we're going to go ahead and sew this seam. So I'm going to go ahead and backstitch. This is the place we want to make sure that it's really nice and secure. Keep this nice and flat. I'm going to get my stiletto in here and kind of hold that in position where I want it to be. Sometimes because of the depth of the nap of the, the fabric, it'll kind of want to move around on me. So I just have to keep an eye on it and then control it as I sew. And the stiletto makes a big difference in how well I can kind of control where that fabric is, is going.
getting better all the time. Okay, so now we've got the head, the ears, the horns, and the front of the body. So our little cow is coming right together now. We've gotten the front done. So now we're gonna move on to doing the back. We're gonna go ahead and do the back head, the tail, and the back and put that together. So first we're gonna do the tail. And the tail comes in two pieces. It has a tail tip and the tail itself. Okay, I've gone ahead and sewn one part together. We're gonna do that with this one. I'm just gonna match up the bottom seams, pull them together and sew this little seam right here. So one of the things that I found can be helpful too when you see these little pieces and they don't quite seem to match because of the difference in the fabrics is if I look at the pattern and I can kind of see where things go, it's very helpful for me that I'm like, okay, this is where, this is where it's at. So make sure that you're keeping track of it. Like it'll tell you attach tip. Here is the tip that goes here, the nap direction. Always make sure that you're looking at that, especially when you're cutting it out. All right, so we're just gonna sew this one, little quarter inch seam allowance, and making sure to back stitch on this. So I've got two tail pieces with the tail tip sewn on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put these right sides together and sew all the way around, leaving this part open, just like it says on the pattern piece, and that's what we'll turn it out through. This is a part, I've used the Cuddle 3 for the tail tip, which is that dark gray. In the pattern, she actually has a variation that you can do that uses a longer faux fur, which you, if you can find um, some scraps of, it works really, really well to make it an extra fluffy one. You could also use a different kind of Lux Cuddle that had a longer nap. If you wanted to give it that extra, that extra fluff, I don't even know what you call the tail part extra little fun part down here. Some of her patterns, some of the rustic horseshoe patterns will include instructions for using yarn for different parts like that on the the nutty nag. That's the way the mane can be done is with yarn, which is super fun. So I like the way that in the rustic horseshoe patterns, she often includes variations that add different textures and make it just a little extra fun. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. There's my, the tip is pinned nice and well because I've got a lot of curve to go around there. I'm gonna go ahead and pin up here. Those side seams are gonna be a little bit easier to sew because they're just straight. So I'll need fewer pins, but I do wanna make sure that the edges are staying together as I go. So kind of doing a little flip, flip look to make sure that those raw edges are actually matching. And as with all the seams, we'll sew it and we'll check it, make sure it caught both sides. If it doesn't, just go back over, stitch it again, make sure it catches. All right. So again, we're gonna start at the top because we're gonna leave that top edge open. So I'm gonna start up here, secure the seam stitch all the way around. I'm going to kind of pivot when I get to this tail tip seam. Kind of sew to the seam and as soon as I get to that edge where they meet, I'm going to go ahead and lift my foot, pivot out a little bit to add a little extra roundness to that tail tip. Stop it about a quarter of an inch out, and I'm going to pivot again to give it a nice sharp ending there. I'm going to continue to work my way around. Do the same thing when we come up here. Make sure it's curving in nice and sharp. Stopping again at that seam line between the tail tip and the tail. Pivoting and head straight back up. stitch. Take it out. All 
All right, so I've sewn all the way around the tail. Now I'm going to clip off just the end of the tail just to make it turn extra nicely. I'm going to go ahead I kind of pop that bottom in and I just use a pen of some sort to push it up. There we go. I don't want to lose that cap in there. I can go ahead and kind of use this stiletto to, to pull out the edges, make sure everything is nice and round, pull out that end. And again, we can run the stiletto up that edge, pull the fibers out of the seam allowance, and make it all just a really soft, lovely finish. And now we got a tail. Okay, so once the tail is done, we're gonna sew it onto the body. The tail is at the center back. So I'm just gonna fold this real quick and find my center back. Pin the tail on. Totally doesn't matter which direction you wanna do it. We're just gonna nudge the raw edges up to each other and then I am going to pin it twice. So one, one of the things that I found when working with Cuddle is that if I pin it once on a place like this, the tail is likely to kind of shift on me and move before I get it to the sewing machine or as I'm sewing it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the two pins in there. And I'll put the two pins in there and then I'll be able to sew it and it's not going to move on me. All right, again, we're putting the tail in. I would normally base this in most situations, but this one we're actually gonna be sewing the bum shut later along this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a regular straight stitch to make this a secure seam. So it's a little bit different than we did with some of the other when we were attaching things together. And I'm actually gonna go all the way across with a back stitch and make sure that it's really secure. One, it will help it so that when I'm hand sewing it shut, I have a line for where the quarter inch is. But also, if I were to give this to a kid, I am quite sure they're gonna pick it up by the tail at some point. So this makes that nice and secure on there and isn't going to come out. Okay. So we've got our back, our tail. Now we're gonna sew the back heads together, side head. So we've got two pieces like this. They're marked I and J at the top, at the top and bottom. We're just gonna sew along this whole back swoop of the head right sides together. So we'll match that. I'm gonna get the end here matched and then make sure that that little swoop here at the back of the head, I'm gonna make sure that that matches as well stick a little pin in, then I can go ahead and go all the way around. And if I do this kind of like pinning further apart and then in between, it really does help with the cuddle to avoid any stretching that can happen. A lot of times people, when they're, they're pinning, they kind of want to flatten it out and it will stretch it as you go around. So doing this kind of further apart pinning and then coming back in between and pinning helps a lot to keep it from stretching and also keeps those edges nice and even. All right. I think that's enough pins, so we'll go around and we'll sew this whole edge right here. All right, I'm gonna back stitch. Just a little bit, do my straight seam. I'm gonna secure that really well. And then just work our way around this curve. So I kinda need to pivot every once in a while and make sure that the fabric doesn't kinda gather up on me. And you can absolutely do that, just take your time make the fabric do what you want it to do. That's pretty easy with using, using the tools that you've got, the stiletto and like I said, the pivot function or just pivoting your foot like I'm doing. 
you just lift the foot just a little bit, pivot your fabric, make sure it's going in the direction you want it to go. All right, so as we get this together, there's one other place that I want to actually clip a curve. So this is the back of the head. One of the things that I've found when I'm working with the cuddle is these round curves will fold out just fine and be super smooth, but sometimes these convex curves can be a little bit of an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna clip just a little bit in here. On either side, so we'll allow that to open up. And now we have the back of the head. And again, we're gonna do the same thing that we've done before. Just kind of fluff up those seams. Pull that Lux Cuddle out of the seam allowances. Make it nice and pretty. All right, so now we're gonna sew the back of the head onto the back of the body and we'll have a kind of a matching front and back. an edge, an edge, the middle, and then all between. Okay, we've got that. And again, I'm gonna do that where I have to kind of pull it. So this part here, because there is a seam, it wants to V a little bit more than I want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of pull it so that it actually goes where I need it to go and then pin it in position there. So I'm not actually stretching the fabric, but just getting it to be taut where I need it to be. But because it's a knit, sometimes the fabric will do some other things that are unexpected, but there's always ways of controlling it and making it do what you need to. So don't be afraid to kind of give it a little, little pull, make it be where you want it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and sew this seam to sew the back of the head to the back of the body. All right, so we're gonna just sew this with a straight stitch. And again, this is an important seam, so we're back stitching. We'll go ahead and sew across this whole seam. Then I'm gonna double check it, because this is another important seam that I wanna make sure is caught really well so that when this gets played with, it stays together. So I'm gonna go and check the back. So my quarter inch is totally fine here. It got a little small here, but it's still caught. I'm gonna open it up, give it a little tug, totally fine. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Okay, so now we've got a back <laughs> and we've got a front, but now we gotta make the legs. All right, so let's tackle the legs. The legs are one of the options in the Blissful Bovine pattern that has two different options that you can use. You can do a cloven hoof pattern like the sample here or we're gonna do the round hoof today, which is a little bit easier. But if you're up for the challenge, the cloven hooves are absolutely adorable. Putting the legs together is one of the very common ways the pudgy plushies are put together. So this is a very common technique. There we go. It's a very common technique for the pudgy plushies, the way that these legs are put together. So I'm going to show you how we're, how we're going to do that. I just want to show you the pattern pieces first for the two variations and how they're going to work if you're going to do either one of them. All right, so there are two leg sizes. This is the important thing to remember when you're cutting out these patterns. So sometimes it can seem like you have way too many pattern pieces, and that's because you're going to have two Legs and two arms is the way that they refer to in the pattern. The legs are the lower ones, the arms are the upper ones. Legs are bigger, arms are smaller. So you're actually going to have a whole bunch of variations for all of these. So if you decide at the very beginning which one you want to do, it's a lot easier. So you'll need to have two arms, two legs, and then it starts to get a little bit differently because starts to get a little bit different because you're gonna decide, do you want the cloven hoof or do you want the round hoof? So we're not going to use these today, so I need to put them aside, which also means that we're not gonna use these side wall pieces that are for the cloven hooves. So we're gonna take those away. So today we're only using these patterns to create the arms and the legs. 
So I've got my pieces. I'm going to move these out of my way and show you the pieces that I've got. So we're going to work through one of the legs today. And here are the real pieces. So I've got two of the hoof sidewalls. This is the round hoof sidewall. I've got the foot pad, which is circular, and then two of the legs. So you'll have two, two sets of these for the legs and two smaller versions for the arms to create all of the appendages. The first thing we're gonna do is sew the sidewall to the leg piece. We're gonna do that on both of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin those together. And they're gonna be right sides together. At this point, it doesn't matter which one is right and left. You've traced out two that are, two that are, right side up patterns and two that are reverse patterns and we'll put those together so that you have a turning gap. If you do it and you accidentally put the wrong pieces together, don't worry about it. It will be fine. Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing for folks, but it really doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over because this is a little bulky. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it and I'm going to pin from this side. And just pinning in between to make sure that that the cuddle three part that's on the back the hoof is up to the raw edge and wants to stay where it is I found that sometimes when I'm folding these together because the nap is going this direction on this piece and this direction a little bit on this piece they'll fight together so when you have pieces that are actually the opposite direction of nap sometimes it'll be a little bit of an argument between them and you'll have to pin sometimes a little extra and that's just to keep the edges even. It's important to do. So again, pinning end to end in between. I'm using my clover pins, which are really my favorite for working with the cuddle fabrics. They're really nice and strong and they go right through. Okay, so again, I've got it pinned. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, pin from this side, make sure everything is kind of where I want it to be. I'm going to move these just a little bit. If you look on here, you'll see the markings that I made that correspond, the markings on the pattern for the leave open sections. That's what these are. You want these to correspond so that they're mirrored of each other. If it doesn't work and you mess it up so that one is over, they're both over here, it's fine. Remark it. It doesn't matter. There's no real right and left of this pattern. It's, it's symmetrical completely except for this little mark. So those are transferable. Okay, so now we're going to sew the hooves on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sew it with the cuddle, the cuddle three side down. I will say that sometimes it works better with the cuddle three down and sometimes it works with the lux cuddle down. So what I would recommend is that you give it a try, see what happens. If you need to redo the next one so that it goes through a little bit easier, flip it over, see what happens. This seems to be working through just fine. But I do know that sometimes it can cause some variances. So go ahead and try it both ways, see what works better for you. the second leg. All right, so now I'm gonna, gonna double check my seam allowances, make sure, not that they're even, but just that they've both caught. Totally fine. So now we have a front and back of the leg so now we've got the two leg parts. We're going to sew them together. But before we sew them together, I want to do a special little stay stitching seam, I call it, along these edges. And I do it because it, turn, it helps make that turning gap a little bit easier to turn and to hand sew later. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Basically, we're going to take a stitch just along one layer, a quarter of an inch, just between the lines for the turning gap. So 
So it's, again, it's just one layer. And this is just something I have found works really well when I am needing to create a turning gap with cuddle fabric. Because it's a knit, it's hard to see where the turn is supposed to be or to get an accurate seam allowance when I'm just folding it from the front. But when I do this little stitching line, I'm able to see exactly where I need to turn it. So I'm gonna do that with both sides. Okay, so now I've got two mirrored legs. They both have the stay stitching right here. And then they're going to just match up just like this. Okay, so I'm going to match the top. And then because those turning gaps are important places to make match, I'm going to pin that next. So one line should basically match the other. All right. We want to make sure that those edge match each other. And I can go ahead and kind of shift things around slightly if they need to, if they need to move. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to actually match the hooves together where the seam is for that. Then the bottom seam. And then I'll come back up. Okay, and because this seam is one that I really wanted to try to match really well, I'm actually going to pin diagonally from the corner and that seems to help me hold it a little tighter than if I just pin it straight down. I'll go ahead and pin in between. Now for me because when I'm sewing a lot of times I will forget that this pin is actually marking the end of my turning gap that I don't want to sew here. I'm going to go ahead and put a second pin in just to remind me that when I get to the two pins that's where I'm going to stop. Okay, so then I'm going to sew this side and we'll come back and pin the other. So we're going to sew this from the top. I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to come down to the turning gap where I have my two pins to remind me. And I'm going to make it match the seam that I did before. It's not imperative that it has to match, but that's the goal is to try to get it to match up. I'm going to pivot and I'm just going to sew right off the edge. And then I'm going to cut my thread and move down to the next turning gap, the end of the turning gap. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my needle down right at the end since I can match that up nice and easily. I'll put my foot down, take out my pins, and then I'm actually going to lift that, turn off the edge, sew to the raw edge, and then I'm going to back stitch to get back to where I started. One more back. There we go. I'm going to turn this, pivot, and just head on down to the end. Okay, now when I get to this part here where there's all these seam allowances and I have the seam from the Lux Cuddle on the front or on the top of the leg and the Cuddle 3 on the, he on the bottom and we've got it on both layers, it can get a little bit bulky right here. So make sure you take your time. You can kind of squish it down. And I do try to open those seams just a little bit, just to kind of spread out the bulk a little. I'm going to go ahead and just take our time through that. If you need a hand crank, totally fine. And get to the end, back stitch, and take it out. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and pin the other side. We're going to match up the seams where they come together on the hoof the end of the hoof and all along that side. All right, so now we're just gonna sew this whole side one more time. So now we've got the legs sewn together and now we need to put the foot pad on. So this is the part that can be a little intimidating for folks, but it's really not too hard. I do have a secret little tip that I use that I fold the hoof in half again, and I find these centers of the, the gray part of the hoof. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark it with my, my pen. So I've just folded it. It's not super accurate, but it's accurate enough. I'm just matching my seam allowances on the side, kind of bring it over make a little mark. Now I've got four parts to match up with this. 
with the hoof. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the actual, the foot pad is what the pattern piece is called. So I fold it in half, matching my notches on the side. I'm gonna carefully come up and mark the center there. I'll do the same thing here. Mark it. This is not required, but it does give me an extra set of places to match as I'm pinning this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to grab it. It does not really matter which way you do it. If I'm trying to be very careful, if I'm trying to very, be very careful, I'll make sure that the hoof nap goes down on each hoof. Half the time it's luck and half the time I tried. So it just depends on how careful you want to be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to match up the center with the center in the hoof. So the center of the foot pad with the center of the hoof. I'm gonna put a pin in here and we're just gonna pin the quarters and then come back. So the side notch is going to match with the side seam. And we'll go basically to six o'clock. We'll match that line with this one. One of the ways of doing this too is that I sometimes will put a little pin in here. So I'll put a pin in this notch, this line, so I can see it better from this side. And then when I have my notch here, I can actually just line it up with the pin. And sometimes that's a little bit easier than trying to do the flip flip. And then again, we're gonna match a notch with the side, put a pin in, and now I have to make these sides match. So this is the part that can also be a little bit intimidating for folks, but once you get this down, it's actually pretty easy. It's gonna kind of go like this. So truthfully, your edges of the hoof are gonna kind of flare out a little bit as you pin them in. And again, I'm gonna pin in between, and then I'll go back in between those. So I'm gonna turn this around because I wanna pin from this side right now. And then in between those, I'm gonna go ahead and pin from the reverse side to keep that where I want it to be. Just a little bit better. So I'll pin the quarters, and then I basically I pin the eighths, and then I pin the sixteenths or 30 seconds. I'm not sure what it is after that. I'm going ahead and pin more and more and more. I'm going to pin a whole bunch around here. This is another one of those seams that if you want to, you could go ahead and hand baste it. I would definitely suggest if you do the cloven hose that that's what you do is take your time with those. Do a lot of hand basting. You'll need to clip those curves a lot more. This one, we won't clip any curves at all. And the cloven hose are adorable, but they are definitely a little bit more time consuming. Okay, so again, in the middle, and then in between each of those. Okay, so this should help keep it so that it's fairly evenly distributed. And I found that making that quarter mark at basically six o'clock and 12 o'clock helps a lot in getting those foot pads on very nicely using the notches at the side seams. So now we're gonna go ahead and sew this. You'll want to make sure that you're always sewing it with the flat of the foot pad down against the sewing machine. It makes it much, much easier than trying to sew it this direction. When people try to sew it with the leg down toward the foot, or when you sew it with the leg down toward the feed dogs, it tends to get more pleats or little puckers in here. So make sure that you flip it over and sew it flat. So I'm really gonna take my time with this, make sure that it's not getting any little puckers in it, that I can kind of pull it nice and taut as I'm sewing around and really take my time to lift the foot, adjust it as I need to.
I'm gonna come back around to the front, stitch over it one more time, make sure it's nice and secure. I'm gonna go check the bottom. Make sure that I've caught everything. My seam allowances aren't even, but that will not matter at all. Okay. Just kind of double checking. It's an important little place. Got a tiny pucker there. I think I'm gonna let it go. We'll see how I feel when I turn it inside out. That's always my, my test is will this matter? So when you're doing with this with cuddle fabric, this is one of the perks about Cuddle is I can leave all of this unclipped and it's gonna turn and be just fine. If you were to do this out of cotton fabric, you're gonna have to do a lot of clipping. So one of my favorite parts about sewing the plushies with Cuddle is they're just, just so easy. There's none of that clipping curves really. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it inside out. See how that works. So I turned it through the turning gap. Okay, not through the end, but through the turning gap. I'm gonna go ahead and pluck that out. So this is the this is the top of the leg. So this is I'm saying make sure that you're not trying to turn it out that hole. It's way too small to do that. Okay. So now I've got my side seams. So here's the turning gap that we did. So from here you can see this is the little stay stitching line that we did for the turning gap that actually lets this just pop right in. If I give it a little a little tug, it'll turn right in. That line that's there that we can kind of see is gonna be my guideline for the hand stitching this closed later. So that's what makes this actually very, very helpful is now I know exactly where to, where to stitch to take my stitches to make this a nice clean closure when I get it stuffed. So now before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zigzag the end of this, make sure it's nice and secure. I'm gonna do that with all four of mine. So I've got all of my legs and my arms made. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch the, or I'm gonna go ahead and base down the top of those with a zigzag. So I did, I did the leg today, which is the easiest one to start with. So I would recommend that you start with the legs, move to the arms, do both legs, then do the arms. The circles get smaller and a little bit more. <laughs> The arms are, require a little bit more fastidiousness. Is that the right word? Uh, but they turn, out, they turn out beautiful too. So this was the one that had the pucker in it. Let me see if I can find where, where the pucker was. <laughs> this, is, this is really it. This is what I, what I kind of love about it. I can't, I can't find the pucker from the outs. Oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. Um, and the only reason I can tell it's there is because I can feel it. I can feel it gets a little thick right there. Right, right there, there's a tiny little pucker. Totally invisible. So this is how I decide whether or not I need to do anything about it. If I can get to this side and I can't find it, I don't see it easily, I'm just gonna leave it there. If I have to, I can go ahead and take out some stitches, redo it, stretch it a little bit and make it, make it fit little better. I usually end up taking about an inch on either side of that little pucker out to make sure that it'll smooth out. But always do do a double check and make sure that it actually is showing that it is a problem before you go ahead and take it out. You'll be surprised how often you can get a little pucker in there and never ever see it. All right, so we've got all of the legs and arms basted together. So now we get to sew them on to the body. So we're gonna go ahead and sew the arms and legs onto the front body. Again, the arms are smaller than the legs and we want the turning gap to be at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of place these where I want them to be and then I'll sew them on. Okay, so on the legs we want the turning gap to be on the inside. So I've marked it here. And then I wanna check the nap to make sure that the nap is both going down on the hooves. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can pet that one and I see it's nice and smooth when I do that. I'm gonna check this one. And when I pet this one, I can see that the nap is going in the wrong direction. So the nap is actually running bottom to top instead of top to bottom. So I can make a choice of leaving the turning gap on the inside, which is easier to hide, or I can make the decision to make the nap 
the same on both feet. And I'm going to turn it so that the nap is running top to bottom on both feet. Okay, so now I'm gonna match the legs with the notches on the front of the body. And again, I'm gonna use two pins. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this for both legs and both arms and then just zigzag them on to hold them in place. sew those on and I'm going to sew these from the wrong side so that I can see the fabric a little bit better see where I'm sewing and make sure that it's all caught nicely So now, all the arms and legs are tacked into place, they're basically basted in position, and now we can sew the front to the back. This is always a little bit confusing because the back seems so small compared to the front. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold all of this stuff in, and these are gonna get pinned together, and I promise it will work. All right, we're gonna match, the first thing I'm gonna match is the top head seam with the top head seam on the front. So back to front, center head seam. We're gonna pin that in position. And then just gonna work our way around the body, pinning the parts that are supposed to match first and then in between. So that top part is one and we come around. The neck part is the next one that's needing to match. So on these sections, you can go ahead and you can nest your seams or you can spread them and try to keep them open. Sometimes I find it a lot easier just to nest the seams in places like this. So that's what I'm gonna do. So putting one seam allowance one direction, one seam allowance the other way, and they'll fit together really nicely. So I've pinned the top middle, the next seam, the bottom. I'll do the same thing with the other side and then go ahead and pin all the way around. All right, now that there's a million pins in it, we can sew. get up to this head it gets a little bit tougher because we've got a lot of stuff going on right here so we need to make sure and take it nice and slow this is definitely one of those places that you could hand baste it first but honestly if you just take it slow you'll be fine the biggest part is when we get to the ears and the horn there's a lot of thickness here so if your machine struggles at all just go ahead and hand crank it do not try to force it through because we've got a lot of layers. Okay, so I felt it get caught a little bit and let go. So I'm gonna have to go back in. I've got this lovely little pleat right here, which is not right. So I'm gonna go in and take this out. The easiest way for me to do it is with a little craft knife. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna kinda feel around until I, I find the seam. You 
kind of trying to take those stitches out and trying to take them out with a regular seam, seam ripper is not any fun. But if I kind of can go between and I can kind of feel it where the thread's going to pop for me, I'm going to go ahead and kind of take out those stitches. And I'm just going to take it out until I see where the the pleat has stopped, and then I'll just redo that little part. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken that out. I'm going to repin this. We did it, we stitched all the way around. We got the legs in there, the ears, the horns. We're gonna, I'm gonna turn this guy right side out, see if we can do it. Here comes his little face. <laughs> all right, there we go. He looks a little limp still. All right, so everything is where we want it to be. We've got the arms on, the legs. I forgot to mention earlier, and I want to kind of bring it up now, is that one of the things that I really love about this pattern is that throughout the pattern, she'll give you illustrations on what it should look like now. So you, as you sew each piece, you'll be able to tell, am I on the right track? Do I have this in the right order? And that's really fabulous. So that's one of the, one of the spots is here. You can see this is what it'll look like. So the last thing we need to do is sew on the bum, which is another part of the pudgy plushies collection that is actually very universal is this whole the triangle sort of body the arms the legs and this bum so we're going to do that next and get that so that he can sit up okay so i've got the bum pattern here which is made out of the the lux cuddle here i've got sign seam notches and then i've got marks to have my center back my front center and then the leave open section so these little tabs here are where i'm going to leave it open and we mentioned that earlier that we're gonna leave it open as a turning gap at the tail. So I've got the marks as well on my fabric piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that fit on here. So I'm gonna kinda of turn it inside out, mostly just shove his arms and legs and tail to the inside. So before we get this sewn on, I wanna go ahead and I wanna do that stay stitching on both the body and the bum, so that when I sew them together, doing that stay stitching to, or when I do, the ladder stitch to close it up, it's a really easy seam to close. So we're gonna do that first. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch just the quarter inch between those gaps. So now that I've done the stay stitching along the back of the body and the back of the bum between the notches, where on the pattern it tells us to leave open, so I've gone ahead and stay stitched that. You don't have to, it's really just a, an extra thing that I like to do to make it a little bit easier. Now we're going to match it up. So we've got a notch at the center back that I'm going to match with the tail. Okay, and then I'm going to come over and match my notches. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put two pins here because this is, again, where I want to start and stop my sewing so that I will leave that turning gap. And I'm going to go ahead and take this pin out of the tail because for me that's a way to tell that I'm not supposed to sew there. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to stick a pin in here where my notch is so that I can easily get that to match here. Pin that in position. And then I'm just going to work my way around finding those important spots. Okay. Get my leg on here. Match up the middle. And go ahead and pin in between. Again, it will seem like one of those seams where it doesn't seem like it's going to match, and then it just will. And again,
again, it's in the Luxe Cuddle, so if there's any issues with a little pucker or anything, because it didn't match perfectly, you're going to be fine. So I'm going to put a pin in here at my notch, because that's easier for me to see, and match it with my side seam. leg construction, leg, bum, body construction is the same for all of the pudgy plushies. They're all basically built with this sort of pyramid style body with the arms and legs sewn into the side seams and then the bum sewn on last with the turning gap for stuffing. So once you have this construction down pat, the other styles are super easy to do. Again, I'm going to try to sew this this direction. It's just going to work through, take our time, and work our way all the way around, leaving that turning gap open. So now we've sewn it all the way around. We'll go ahead and check that seam, make sure that we caught everything, go back and catch something if we didn't. Okay, and I kind of come around the whole thing. My seam allowance will be a little bit wonky and we don't really mind at all, right? So now I can go ahead and turn the whole thing inside out. Plop. <laughs> there he is. He's super cute. Look at that. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and put his eyes in and that'll add a little bit of extra dimension to him. One of the things when we were at the face, you'll remember maybe there are little, little black marks here that are where the eyeballs go. So when you're in here and you can see when you're doing the face, you can see the eye mark, but you don't actually put the eyes in until the end. And that's really important is you don't actually do anything about that until now. So I just go back in, I find it. All right, so I'm gonna take this little spot that's marked and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clip it just the tiniest little bit. Okay, just a tiny little eighth inch hole. And then I've got my 24 millimeter eyeballs that I'm gonna take right side. And I'm just gonna push them up here until I find that hole. So I just kind of push around till I find it. There it is. I push it through and I'm gonna get the backing. And the backing is shaped sort of like a little hat. So it has a, a top on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on just like that. So it clicks all the way down. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find the other side of his face. Her face. I'm not sure. Okay, let me see which side did I get it on. That side. So it's going to be over here. Here we go. So somebody takes a little bit of searching. There's the spot. Again, I'm going to clip it just the tiniest and push this up here. So I can again, I can find the, I can find the little post and then I just make the post get to where the, where the hole is. There we go, come on. There we go, push it through, put on the little hat. 
push it all the way down. Okay, now he's got big, beautiful eyeballs. Super fun. <laughs> I love the way that they just sort of come to life at this point. All right, so now we can go ahead and stuff him. We're gonna start with the head and work our way down the body and then we'll stuff all of the legs. We're gonna stuff our blissful bovine with silky polyfill, which is a softer version of the polyfill that you're probably familiar with. It's great for stuffed animals and will make it super squishy and lovable. So we're just gonna start, we can taste decent sized handfuls and we're just gonna start, basically you're gonna stuff from the top to the bottom and then the arms and legs. So we're gonna start and push some up to his top. You're gonna be surprised at how much polyfill you can actually get in there. We're just going to keep on stuffing until he's nice and sitting tall. We're going to push it out to the nose first and then keep going. Right. <laughs> there he is. Look at that. He's super cute. I absolutely love these guys. So once you've gotten to the point that I feel like he's pretty well stuffed, there's a couple of things that I like to do to kind of make him a little extra. So one of the things is that when they sit here, they tend to do the little fall over thing. So I actually make a pouch and I make it using the pattern. I use the pattern, I cut it out of cotton, I sew all the way around it a couple of times and I stuff it full of poly pellets and then I sew it closed. And this can go right into the bottom and I'll just kind of push that stuffing down and then work this guy in. And then you kind of just get it to smooth out just enough to fill up that bottom of it. So when he sits, he'll have a little weight down there to hold him in place. So once I get that, let me switch it around here, see if I can push that toward the front a little. So once I've got that in there, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish stuffing him with a little bit extra. And it's amazing how much stuffing we can get in these guys. We'll use the rest of the bag in here and get him nice and firm. So I usually leave a little bit of room in there before I add in the poly pellets. And then I just finish up the bag. All gone. Okay, so at this point, he'll sit a little bit better, which is great. And then we can also, we can also add eyelids. The eyelid piece is just a funny little piece that will actually create a nice big eyelet, eyelid that sits over his eye that we're going to hand sew on afterward. But the way that this is constructed is pretty clever, if you ask me. So you're going to cut out your eyelid piece, trace it onto a piece of the Lux Cuddle, and then you're actually just going to fold this in half, and then we're going to sew all the way around there. So it seems like a very weird way of doing it because you're actually going to sew it closed but then we're gonna go ahead and cut it open on the back and turn it right side out. So let's stitch around this. I'm gonna go ahead and stitching it. So I'm going to stitch it right on the line that I've drawn. It's not a cutting line, it's a sewing line. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew on that. Okay, so it's sewn all the way around. I'll go ahead and take my pins out. Then I'm just gonna trim around this, trim the seam allowances down to about a quarter of an inch or a little bit less. Go ahead and throw that in the trash. And then I'm gonna take and pop a little hole in here. So it's just one layer and I'm just gonna cut a little hole in the backing I'm going to go ahead and cut a bigger hole. 
And I'm going to use that hole to turn it inside out. So the reason that this works is because Cuddle is a knit fabric, so it isn't going to fray. And it isn't going to cause any issues on the back because we're going to hide it underneath the eyelid. So that cut part is actually going to be on the back of his eyelid against the eye. And honestly, even just looking at it here, I can't really tell where the hole is so easily, which is a lovely perk of Lux Cuddle. So now we can go ahead and position these on the eyes however we want to. And I'm going to go ahead and just pin it in place. And we'll go ahead and hand stitch those after. So here's, here's I2. Let's see. Better make sure I've got the, the hole on the right side there. All right. Does that look even? <laughs> I think he's pretty cute. I think he's pretty cute. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and do all the hand sewing. So I'll hand sew on the eyelids, and I'll go ahead and hand sew all of the turning gaps closed, and then he'll be ready to cuddle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hand stitch this closed. So this is the turning gap that we left on the leg where we did the stay stitching beforehand so I know exactly where my seam is supposed to be. I've just got a long needle, long sharp needle, with two strands of polyester thread and a big knot at the end. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find the top of the hole and I'm just going to get that knot to kind of stay in the seam allowance there. Go ahead and trim that out of the way so it doesn't confuse me. And I'm just going to do a ladder stitch down this, taking in one side where the stitches are and then switching to the other side. So a stitch on this side, a stitch on this side. And I'm going to do kind of big stitches at this point, and then I will come back across it one more time and really seal that turning gap with smaller stitches. So these are probably about a quarter of an inch long. Just going to go back and forth. So basically, I'm going across, going under where the uh, where the stay stitching was. So I go underneath that one layer of fabric. I come up again about a quarter of an inch later. Pull it across. Go straight down on the other side. Basically, creating rungs, which is why we call it a ladder stitch. So let's see if I can do this big enough that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to do this, like I said, one, one time down here with nice big stitches just to get it to close up. And give it a little tug. And then I'll work my way back with much smaller stitches to hold it nice and tight so that those seams don't pop open. So all the way to the end, I'm going to do a little knot right here and then work my way back up. So once I've gotten back up to the top where my turning gap started, I'm going to go ahead and do another little knot. And 
I'm going to do that twice. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick the needle in, make it come out the other side. I cut the thread so that the thread tail is buried inside there. Then I can go ahead and I can fluff up that edge just a little bit where the stitching was. And no one is any wiser. So I'll go ahead and do that with the rest of the body. So I'm just trying to fix, fix the little eyes, arrange them how I want them to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew those on as well with a ladder stitch. Just taking a little stitch on the outside of the eye, I think. It's pretty good now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this down all the way around lock and do a little knot on either end, hold them in place. Feel free to rearrange the eyes, make them be a little sad, a little perky. You can also add eyelashes in here, which is very fun. She has all sorts of ideas in the pattern on how you can make this pudgy plushy yours. And I think that's one of the most fun parts about it is just the variations that you can do to make it your own stuffy. So once you've gotten these techniques down for working with the pudgy plushies, you're going to be able to make a ton of the other ones. She's got a whole, they have a whole pudgy plushy collection here at Missouri Star. You can make the giraffe, the elephant, the hippo, all sorts of fun things. And I hope that you have a great time making your own pudgy plushie. Thank you for watching this tutorial from Shannon Fabrics and Missouri Star. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.